I'm gonna be generous today and I'm gonna give people this spreadsheet spreadsheet is in the paper the day. Oh nice. Damn, okay. Alright, we're back, but this week things are a bit different. We have the optimal lineups. We already know what they are. We already know who you should be taking. And we're not just gonna tell you, we're gonna give you a little summary at the end. So stay tuned till the very end of the video. We'll do a little bit of a recap. I know we normally do that, but this time we're gonna have some visuals. All right, so stay tuned till the end of the video to see that. That sounds stupid. But we always sound stupid, so what's new? You guys wanna know who I'm playing? You gotta wait till the end. Or click to the end. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Plays and Fades YouTube channel. I'm your host, Gambles Gordo, joined by this beauty of a man here, Kirod, and it's UFC time once again. We are in the Bat Cave right now because you know what? At 3 p.m. in Canada, it's dark. <laughs> if we get 15 likes on this video, I'll buy a ring light because you know what? Production. Yep. How are you doing on that week off, my friend? Depressed. What? I mean, look at that, a week off of oh, the UFC. Right. As my friend, who I just found out, runs his own MMA meme page, said, Saturday better come soon, because this week off of UFC is not it. So, yeah. Wow. Shout out at Pablo underscore Casa underscore memes. On Twitter? On Instagram. We had an Instagram once. <laughs> We don't talk about that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but we're excited, obviously, about another week of UFC. This card is not, uh, you know, it's not a pay-per-view. It's not the most elite card of all time, but there's a lot of fighters on this card that we personally are big fans of around here, which means it's, a, it's an exciting card for us. I mean, that uh, Aldo Font main event, Aldo's an absolute legend. So the you know, co-main, Fazi versus Riddell is going to be an absolute banger. Have to give you a shout out here. The first time that this man ever won a bet when I dragged him to the deep waters of MMA betting and there was no return was on Louis Smolka. That's a little soft spot in our heart right there. True story. It's Louis like, Smolka was the reason for my gambling addiction. It's not an addiction if you win. You know what? Let's not waste any more time. Let's get her started. Like we said at the beginning, I will tell you exactly who I'm playing, who I'm targeting in all formats at the end of the video. But let's break it down. The first core play of the day is actually going to be Louis Smolka. Funny. All bias aside, though, this is a spot where I really do like Luis Smolka. He's facing a guy here, Morales, so I just think Smolka's better everywhere. Now, we've seen him only have a few fights in the UFC, and they've been to some really lower level of competition. Luis Smolka's a guy who is a really dangerous guy wherever it goes. Very, very durable, nasty combination on the feet, and an impressive, impressive ground game that I think that he's going to be able to use to his advantage. Vince Morales is a guy who likes to shoot for takedowns and use that, implement that into his game. And I think if he wants to mess around on the ground with Smolka, he's still going to take one grappling exchange. Get him out of there. Louis Smolka is a perfect filler and a good core play I'm gonna like for these lineups. But for a favorite, we are actually really liking this. It's going to be Alex Moreno. Tell us a bit more about him. Yes, the man himself, Alex, the great white Morono. I mean, this guy up here at $9,500. So a very expensive fighter on this slate compared to that first one in Smolka, a lot lower down. But uh, there's, again, as we say all the time, there's good reason for this price tag here. He's facing a guy in Gaul who does not have the greatest gas tank and is best on the ground. However, Morono is a black belt in BJJ, and we don't really see him getting submitted early. I mean, the one path to victory that Gaul really has in this fight is probably that first round submission, given the gas tank difference on these two guys. Morono is going to be able to keep it up in those second and third rounds, whereas we don't necessarily see Gaul being able to do that as much, which means that if he's going to win, that's how he's going to win. But with a black belt in BJJ, and with the all-round abilities of Morono, we don't necessarily see him getting submitted early, which means that this $9,500, we can definitely see paying off. Big thing here too is level of competition. Mickey Gall has really struggled against that low level of competition. He lost a boxing fight to the greatest boxer in the UFC of all time, Mike Perry, so isn't that. But no, I think that this is Morono's fight to lose. I think that he wears him down against a third round finish. All right, time for an underdog. If you've been following the page for a while, you know that this is an absolute meme for me as well. And I can't believe I'm going back to the guy who broke my heart, but I'm taking Maki Patolo as my underdog of the week. Okay, let's talk about this. Yeah. Maki Patolo, coconut bombs. Last time out. Had a good amount of money on this guy. Sure. And <laughs> he had a fight where he executed it perfectly. This man, was fighting to the best of his abilities until he death gassed and got choked out in round three with literally a minute left. He had the fight in his bag against a much better level of competition in Julian Marquez. Mm -hmm. Now, a couple fights ago, we saw Dusko get absolutely obliterated by Patola's teammate, Pulihane Sor Soriano. And where I do believe, and I do know that Soriano does have a lot more power, Dusko Todorovic's defense is non-existent. If he lands one of those coconut bombs, perfect, that's fine. 
But the big thing here too is I'm not a big fan of Dusko's overall submission game either. And the way that some, uh, Patola loses a lot of these fights is he gets put into a guillotine like Darren yeah. Stewart did to him. He's choked up by Julian Marquez and Dusko is not Julian Marquez. So I think that at the price tag that Patola has, he definitely has a much better chance to win than this line does indicate. And I think that if he executes that same game plan, I mean, he's improving and we've seen him do a lot better recently, that this could be a whole different story. I think that if he wins his last fight against Julian Marquez, he is the outright favorite in this spot. So I think Matt Patola wins this one and I think he does pretty well on DraftKings. Another underdog or mid-range price tag I guess we could go to would be Claudio Puelas. Tell us why we like Mr. Claudio today. Uh, a salary at $8,000, that's very in the middle of this slate, obviously. Um, but he's a guy that we think maybe should be a bit more of a favorite. I mean, a lot of a lot of this line comes down to that recency bias of Guttenmacher's last fight. The way that he won that fight was not the most legitimate way to win a fight ever, which was get beat up very badly and then let the guy gas himself out so that you can win the fight. And uh, that's just not going to happen to Claudio on the other side of this fight this week, we don't think. I mean, he's got a very good gas tank, and on the feet, he's got a big advantage. He's, he's a better striker, he's got the reach advantage, he's got these advantages that um, we don't think Kudenmacher is going to be able to exploit in the same way that he was able to with Rafa Garcia last time out. So we really like that price tag for him this week. But getting another cheap guy like that allows us to get another big favorite, another big favorite we want to target pretty basic, is going to be Brendan Allen, the biggest favorite of the card. Facing guy, Chris Curtis, having having another return to the octagon after fighting, I think four weeks ago it was. He won first round finish, good for him, but uh, he, he was getting pieced up the first uh, five minutes of that fight. I think that Brendan Allen is a completely different beast. Yeah. Um, Brendan Allen is a top guy in the division, just took care of someone in Punaheli Soriano, who I'm pretty high on. Chris Curtis is gonna be a lot smaller, going to have a lot less skill in a lot of areas. When it comes to the mat, I know that Chris Curtis hasn't been submitted in a while, but Brandon Allen is not someone to mess around with. Mm -hmm. I think that he does get up to the $9,600 price range. One last big favorite we're gonna talk about real quick is going to be Mr. Leonardo Santos. Now tell me why we like this guy at 8.8K. Leonardo Santos this week facing a guy, a 39 year old Clay Guida. Um, and yeah, $8,800, a little less, pricey than Morono and Allen up there at the top at $8,800, but we still think he has the advantage all around in this fight. Um, I mean, he's good on the feet. We think he's got Clay Guida beat there. And this guy is phenomenal on the ground. And we think that honestly, he's gonna be able to get the submission in this fight. Clay Guida, you know, has put up a lot of performances in his life, but seven of his losses have been by chokeout, which means that, and that's one of the things that Santos is very good at doing. So we think he definitely has the, uh, the advantage in this matchup all around, especially if it goes to the ground. So we think he gets that sub, puts up good points. All right, last two fights to talk about today. We got to talk about the main event. Rob Font, Jose Aldo, really, really good scrap. What side are we lining up on? Yeah, I mean, we haven't talked about it yet because this isn't a fight that we love a whole ton for DraftKings this week, but uh, we definitely might have a little bit of ownership in here, although at $7,800 and then Rob Font up there at $8,400, pretty close in lines, Rob Font being the favorite. We understand why he's the favorite. I mean, Aldo has a, has a tendency to gas out a little bit later on and Rob Font, Font does not have that tendency as much. He's got the reach advantage. If he stays at range, he can do really well. And he's a guy with very good boxing, so he's definitely a safe option here uh he could definitely put up some decent points but on the other hand we like Aldo a lot i mean obviously Aldo is one of the best in the world has been for a long time not so much anymore since that loss of peter eon and uh, a few losses recently but since then he's been training with some brazilian marines i mean doing some crazy stuff his striking is elite so um we definitely see him being able to put up some points too here we we kind of favor ownership a little a little bit on the Aldo side but Definitely not a very safe play. So not a fight we really love this week, but you can definitely have some ownership. We'll side a little bit more towards Aldo. Yeah, and then we come to the co-main event. This is the fight that everyone's looking forward to, the people's main event. Brad Riddell versus Raphael Fazeev. Absolute banger, but this is one where I, I'm struggling. Yeah. If you look at it aside from their skill sets, these guys are training partners. They were good friends. They told each other they would never fight in the UFC. And here they are. My fear is it's going to be a really, really slow technical affair, which will be really entertaining, but not score very well on DraftKings. Mm -hmm. All right. On one side, you have the wrestling advantage to, to Brad Riddell, which I think if he does implement it, could work out a lot better. He could score. I think he's a safer play. But Rafael Fazib, we all know how good he is. Insane, insane kickboxer. The guy has skills to pay the bills. 
And I don't know, I think this is a spot where I'm gonna have more ownership to Riddell, but this is one of the fights I'm gonna fade probably. Just because a lot of people are gonna be on it, expecting to be an absolute war, but who knows? It could be a low scoring affair. And for that reason, I'm just gonna enjoy. All right, well, those are all our core plays. I think it's time. Here is the aforementioned Excel sheet that we are running. These are our ownerships. As you can tell right here, we have our core plays. We're playing a GPP cash and a little bit of a Hail Mary as well if you want to get really, really risky with it. Um, we have our payup options, our lineup fillers, and our value plays. Let's explain a little bit of them real quick. Fights to target, Gal Morano, like we said. Gal's win condition is that first round. I think that Morano has this done before. If he wants to win, he can do that really easily. Hill versus Crude. I really want to target that fight. I'm split 50-50. Crude is very, very expensive. And I think he has ability to get it done on the ground, but I think if it stays for a prolonged period of time on the feet, Hill is able to take over. I do think this fight finishes, however. When it comes to playing people in cash, I mean, Cheyenne Belisma, not buys anymore. Good cash option up top. I think that she is set up to win this fight pretty easily. And I think Manal Cape is able to do so as well. But what you guys really care about, those Hail Marys, those GPP lines, I think honestly, when we get those price tags for Mer uh, Mer versus Vanderaw, if Vanderaw is anything below $7,500, he will be my risky GPP play. Um, he's shown to fare pretty well in the feed against people, but he gets dominated on the ground. Luckily for us, Mer not really a ground guy. Mm -hmm. If Vanderaw gets on top, which by the way, Vanderaw has a huge size advantage here, a huge weight advantage. If Vanderaw gets on top, could be game over. You don't know what's gonna happen. That is the definition of a GPP. So you're gonna score 120 or zero. Finally, another person we're liking down low could be someone like William Knight in cash. I do think that he's able to, uh, I think the line should be a little bit closer than that. Metafield's been known to gas, so struggling to clinch at all. I think that Knight has more chances than it does entail. And finally, GPP plays down low could be Jeremiah Wells. Comes out like he's shot out of a cannon, but he's an absolute unit. Really skilled everywhere it goes, and his teammate just beat his opponent recently, so they might have a good game plan to get that done. Mm -hmm. Also a very, very good option. So, any more questions, you know where to find us on Twitter, at GamblesBortles, at PlaceFades. Shoot us a question, there's a lot to get done there. I hope you guys uh, do well this weekend. There's only three events left. That kind of sucks for us. Yeah, as you said, I mean, only three more cards for this entire year of 2021. A little bit sad, but also exciting. I mean, moving into 2022, hopefully it is a bit better of a year all around in the world. But these last three cards, I mean, that December 11th card, cool. absolutely incredible. Same. We are excited for that. And you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, so that we're putting out that content for those UFC cards, especially that December 11th one. Maybe even a little contest again with a prize from at Gambles Gordo himself. So we'll see, definitely exciting. Check out our NFL video as well. So yeah, check out our videos there. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and let's make some money. Ding. Ding.